Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Alpine Lutheran Church. It is a privilege to gather with you this morning in worship and in prayer. A few announcements before we begin. The altar flowers are given this week by Daryl and Sharon Walker in honor of their 58th anniversary, so congratulations goes out to them. And by Marge Rokosi in memory of her husband, Tom. A th- big thank you to everyone who helped us out with our outdoor service last week, and we had almost 100 people here. It was a great event. I do want you to mark your calendars. I believe it's the third weekend in October, the weekend of October 18th, 19th, is when we are going to be planning our next outdoor worship service. So go ahead and mark your calendars. We'd love to see you. Last week it was great because we got to see a n- numerous people we hadn't seen in a long time uh, and so please, uh, we look, uh, mark your calendars, we look forward to that. Uh, throughout this week, we will be posting uh, our de- uh, devotions uh, on Facebook and on YouTube. It's a great way for us to connect with the greater ministry here at Alpine Lutheran Church. On Wednesday, we also have our prayer meeting at 7 o'clock. Are there any other announcements that I forgot? Today is a service of communion. For those people who are at home, you can take a moment to go grab some crackers, some water, some juice, some bread, whatever you have on hand, go ahead and grab that because there will be an opportunity for you later, even for those who are watching this uh, at home, uh, to partake in communion with us. Please stand wherever you might be for our opening song. Worship. I will worship with all of my heart. With all of my heart, I will seek you. I will praise you. All of my strength. All of my strength, I will seek you. I will seek you. All of my days. All of my days. I will follow all of your ways, all of your ways. I will give you all my worship, I will give you all my praise. You alone I long to worship, you alone are worthy of my praise. I will bow down and hail you as king and hail you as king. I will serve you. I will serve you. Give you everything. Give you everything. I will lift up. I will lift up my eyes to your throne. My eyes to your throne. I will trust you, trust you alone, trust you alone. I will give you all my worship, I will give you all my praise. You alone I long to worship, you alone are worthy of I will give you all my praise. You alone I long to worship. You alone are worthy of my praise. You alone are worthy of my Every week as we worship together, we have the opportunity to admit to ourselves, to each other, and to God that we do not always live as we are called. In this time of confession, this time of opening our hearts, let us remember that God is merciful and just, eager to offer grace and love. Let us pray.
generous God, source of all life, Lord of mercy and grace, hear our prayer. We come before you in need of healing of our bodies and souls, healing of our relationships, the healing of our pride and fear and apathy. We know that with you nothing is impossible, not even our healing, not even the restoration of the whole world. We pray that you will heal us, that you will heal our world, so that we will be free to serve and love and dream and be as Christ calls us. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. The love of God is beyond measure, and you are included in that love. Know that you are forgiven and freed to love and to serve. Alleluia. Amen. Please be seated wherever you may be. Our first reading for today comes from Philippians chapter 1. For to me, living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I don't know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart, to be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel, so that whether I come and see you or I am absent, absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our prayer of the day is located on the worship screens or the screen in front of you. Please join with me wherever you are uh, and lift this prayer to God. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. What a mighty word God gives. What a mighty word God gives. When he speaks, our faith is fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. What a mighty word God gives. What a mighty word God gives. What a mighty word God gives. God sent us the only Son, who for us the victories won. What a mighty word God gives. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the 18th chapter. Jesus said to the disciples, The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. After he agreed with the workers to pay them the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Then he went out around nine in the morning and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He said to them, You also go out in the vineyard, and I'll pay you whatever is right. And they went. Again, around noon, 
And then at three in the afternoon, he did the same thing. Around five in the afternoon, he went and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you just standing around doing nothing all day long? Because nobody has hired us, they replied. He responded, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to the manager, Call the workers and give them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and moving on finally to the first. When those who were hired at five in the afternoon came, each one received the usual daily wage. Now, when those hired first came, they thought that they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. When they received it, they grumbled against the landowner. Those who were hired last worked one hour, and they received the same pay as we did, even though we had to work the whole day in the hot sun. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I did you no wrong. Didn't I agree to pay you the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I want to give to this one who is hired last the same as I gave to you. Don't I have the right to do what I want with what belongs to me? Or are you resentful because I am generous? So those who are last will be first, and those who are first will be last. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated wherever you may be. In the reading or in the parable that we read this week, I am reminded of a 1992 Clint Eastwood classic film, Oscar winning, called Unforgiven. In this film, Clint Eastwood plays a loner who rides into a western town to settle some scores. And as you can imagine, this is a classic Clint Eastwood Western. It ends up with a violent confrontation. At the end, it's a violent confrontation between Clint Eastwood and a wayward sheriff played by Gene Hackman. At the climax of the film, when Eastwood has bested the sheriff, Hackman, Hackman's character, who's about to die, claims that he doesn't deserve this. Yeah, maybe he's a bit crooked, but for the most part, he's worked hard. He's done a decent job. He's built up a good life. He just doesn't deserve to have things end this way. To which Eastwood replies in a very cool, dry voice, Deserving's got nothing to do with it. My wife and I have kind of a set automatic response whenever our kids complain, that isn't fair. We both reply, sometimes in unison, life isn't fair. Get used to it. This is a phrase that we both learned from our parents, and supposedly they learned from their parents, and hopefully our kids will pass it along to their kids as well. Life isn't fair. Get used to it. Well, today's parable from Matthew's Gospel seems to apply that we could add to that, God isn't fair, which is what makes this such a hard and difficult story. Some parables are hard because they're just confusing or difficult to understand. This parable is pretty straightforward. The problem is that it flies right in the face of what we think as a culture, what we value about Fairness. The world is supposed to be fair. Okay, maybe if the world isn't supposed to be fair, then certainly God is supposed to be fair, right? Yet today's parable says pretty clearly the kingdom of heaven is like this. It's an unfair place. Let's look closely at this parable. Let's deep down, let's dig and see what is it trying to tell us about God or ourselves or what in the world does this parable mean for us? The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner. The landowner goes out and he goes into the town square and he hires some people to come out and work in his vineyard. He goes back, not once, not twice, but four more times to gather more workers to come and work in the vineyard. Now what this tells us is that we either have a really incompetent landowner who can't judge his human resources very well. I mean, why isn't he getting all these people out from the beginning of the day so he can get a whole day's laborer out of them, right? So either he's an incompetent landowner or he actually has a whole different agenda. He's trying to do something far beyond than just hire people. We also notice 
that the landowner goes out and hires these people himself. He doesn't send his, his manager to do it for him. He's okay with his manager paying them at the end of the day. But actually, when it goes to do the hiring, he goes out himself and he actually connects with them and calls them friend even at some points in the story. Another detail that we should notice is that the only group of laborers who agree with the employer on a wage are the first group. We're told that they agree to the usual daily wage. But when the, man or the landowner goes out the second time and the third time, all he says to the people are, go work in my vineyard and I'll do and pay you whatever is right. And then at the very last group, he just tells them to go. He doesn't even agree with them upon a wage that they're supposed to earn. Now this last group, this is the desperate group. This is a group that no one has decided to hire them at all throughout that day. And I'm sure that they're thinking to themselves, okay, we're not going to get paid. It's only an hour. But, you know, if we work hard, maybe we'll impress this guy and he'll hire us the next day. Because, you know, why not? you got nothing to lose. They haven't agreed upon anything. They aren't owed anything. Well, not that much anyway. The parable turns, of course, during the second half. The boss tells his manager to pay the workers, going with the last group first, a full day's wage. I imagine no one is more surprised than that last group that only worked an hour when they receive all of this money. They are paid a generous sum. And then in turn, each group of the workers gets the same amount. Now notice, many of the workers get more than what they were expecting or what they agreed upon They get more than what they earned, but none of them get less than what they earned. And that's the landlord's defense, landowner's defense, when the workers who were hired first get upset. Look, he says, we agreed, and I'm keeping my side of the bargain, and it was a fair bargain. But the problem that I have, and you might have this problem as well, it's that People get more than what is fair. They're getting something extra. They haven't earned this, and so why should they get it? The problem we have is that the landowner is too generous. A careful examination of this story makes it very clear. If God is the landowner, God simply isn't concerned about fairness in the same sense that we are, in a sense of measuring us against one another. God isn't concerned with whether or not we deserve what we get. Instead, God is concerned with making sure that everyone is employed and that everyone has enough. God's justice, then, isn't about scales of comparison. It's about measuring who has, it's not about measuring who has earned what. Instead, God's justice and God's generosity are linked together. In God's kingdom, God simply makes sure that everyone is invited to work and everyone is invited to eat. What does that mean for you and for me? At least a couple of things. First, it means that in God's kingdom, we are all invited to roll up our sleeves and to get to work. No one is disqualified from working in God's kingdom. No one is too young or too old. Nothing about you, not your gender, not your abilities or your disabilities, not your height or your weight or your skin color or your sexuality, your past history or your present circumstances, nothing disqualifies you from working in God's kingdom. There is something for everyone to do. Church should be a snapshot of that reality, a place where everyone's gifts and abilities are welcomed, needed, and appreciated. God says to each of us, you're invited to work. Your work is needed here. And those of us who have spent time looking for work, those who have been unemployed, know just how empowering and dignifying it is to be given work, good work to do. Folks, this is still true in COVID-19 times. We still need everyone's gifts, everyone's skills to navigate this strange new reality and to build the church. The world still needs us to be 
today people like this. Second, I think this parable invites us to imitate God's generosity. We're not generous generous out of a sense of we owe it to God, a sense of indebtedness. We're generous because we believe in our very soul that God is abundantly generous and faithful to us and all that we have, we can feel free to give away because we know God will replenish it. And if we need anything, God is there to give it to us. Our needs have been fulfilled. Not our wants, but our needs. And because God has been so gracious, so generous in fulfilling our needs, we are freed to be generous in turn, to give it all away. We are freed to go and to work, not to earn a wage, not to earn status, not to make ourselves feel good, but we are free to go and to work in whatever our vocation is in order to be generous and sharing the blessings of God. Think about that. The motivation to work that is totally countercultural, totally counterintuitive to what our society teaches us. Our status isn't based on what we do or how much we earn. We don't work in order to have an achievement or just to put money on the table. We work in order to share God's blessings with others. That's the kind of radical generosity that God is displaying in this parable. And God is calling us to imitate, to be like that. Let me tell you a story about how I think that this is, can be embodied. And this is a simple story. Uh, there, and I can't remember where I first heard it. I think my wife told me this story. But there's a woman who retired, and she didn't know what to do with herself. She wasn't a person of means. She just had some new free time on her hands because she was retired. And so she decided she loves to bake. And so what she was going to do was she was going to bake a pie and give it away every single day. Now, the caveat was that she was going to give away a pie to someone new every single day. She wasn't going to give a pie to the same person. Every day, she was going to find someone new, and she was going to give away a pie. Now, at first, this was actually quite easy for her. She loves to bake, so it wasn't a problem the baking. And she had friends and family and neighbors, and so each day she would give a pie, and she was amazed at how wonderful of a response she got from people. After a while, though, it became a challenge, and she had to think creatively how she could be so generous because, well, she started running out of people to give that she knew that she could easily give a free pie to. So she had to start going out and meeting new people and thinking about who she interacted with. She had to plan her day, and she had to figure out, when does the mailman come by? Because I can give the mailman a pie, right? What about the garbage people? I can give them a pie as they go by. I can start giving pies wherever I leave, whenever I leave the house. Yes, it did lead to some awkward moments where people were like, uh, lady, I don't want your pie. It was difficult. It was challenging. But it was rewarding as well. And the thing that it helped her do most was make connections with people. And as she made connections with people, relationships were built and God's kingdom was broadened. People were able to encounter a radical form of generosity which melted their hearts and removed some of the barriers that were preventing them from seeing and encountering and believing in God's truth. We live in a jaded world. It's a sarcastic world. It's a highly critical and divisive world where we take joy in putting down and condemning and criticizing others. And it seems to be overwhelming our culture. Can you see just a little bit how this radical form of generosity can counteract that kind of harsh judgment and criticism that we see so vividly in our world today. I remember during our Rejoicing Spirits worship service, the first time we ever had communion. Rejoicing Spirits is a worship service for uh, adults. Uh, it's, it's kind of structured. It's open to everyone, but it's structured for adults who have some intellectual disabilities. And so as we came, and as I was very careful and very articulate to explain how we would do communion, and of course, no one understood me. Uh, and so when we started to come forward for communion, it was utter chaos. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But it was a joy to see how there actually were about two or three people who had been to our church, who knew communion. Aaron was one of them. Eugene Mund was another one. Who were there, and they turned, and they started to 
demonstrate, to take people by the hand and to show them this is how we're going to receive communion. They were able to use their gifts of communication, their gifts of making connection, to be able to serve and to help others. And it was a beautiful demonstration about how the community, the kingdom of God works. We are generous. We can imitate that generosity, and all of us have a place where we can serve and work. Amen. Our takeaways for today, and remember, our takeaways are always those biblical truths that we encounter in Scripture that we hook our faith on and take home with us. Our takeaway, our first takeaway for today is this. God's justice and God's generosity are linked. Justice isn't isn't just about comparing ourselves to others. It's not about fairness. In God's kingdom, God simply makes sure, this is what God is ultimately concerned with, that everyone is invited to work and everyone is invited to eat. The second takeaway, this parable invites us to imitate God's radical form of generosity and to think of our vocation, our calling, our work, how we spend our day, are always opportunities, not for us to fulfill ourselves, not for us to accomplish an agenda or to derive status in our society, but they're opportunities for us to be generous and to share God's blessing. Let's stand for our song of the day. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and for all those who are in need. Generous God, you make the last first and the first last. Where this gospel challenges the church, equip it for works of service. Strengthen those suffering for Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Sun and wind, bushes and worms, cattle and great cities, nothing in creation is outside of your concern, mighty God. Lord, in your mercy, tend to it all. Give us a spirit of generosity towards all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, where we find envy and create enemies, you provide enough for all. 
bring peace to places of conflict and violence, inspire leaders with creativity and wisdom, give them integrity and a desire to serve, bless the work of negotiators, peacekeepers, and development workers. Lord, in your mercy, reveal yourself to all in need as you are gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, ready to relent from punishing. Accompany judges and lawyers, victims of crime, and those serving sentences. Give fruitful labor and a livelihood to those seeking work. Lord, in your mercy, even beyond our expectations, you choose to give generously. Grant life and health and courage to all who are in need, especially those people whom we name now. Lord, in your mercy, we continue to pray for the families of Alpine Lutheran Church. This week, we pray especially for Kay Lamprey, for uh, Angela, Maddie, and Lauren uh, Zuzovic, for Richard and Joyce Veet, for Becky Toro, and for Nancy Matthews. We pray for Daryl Walker, and for Ron Pauley, and others in need of healing. Lord, we pray that you will abundantly allow your love and blessings to be shared in the lives of these people. Lord, provide for them all that they need. Lord, we also say a special prayer for the West Coast and all those people who are struggling uh, both with the pandemic and the forest fires and the the damage that is catastrophic um, and now an earthquake. Lord, we pray for rays of sunshine and hope and strengthening and miracles and protection Provide for all of the displaced people, Lord. Lord, this is overwhelming and more than we can handle. We need you to move in powerful ways to bring relief uh, and to to fix all that is broken. Lord, in your mercy, all these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust into your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated, wherever you may be. We uh, do want to take a moment to say thank you for your continued generosity, for your partnership in this mission here at Alpine. For those of you who are here in person, you can leave offerings or donations in the offering plates as you leave the sanctuary. Uh, For those of you who are at home, uh, you can also continue to support this ministry, uh, and we're grateful for your continued support and faithfulness. The easiest way, put a check in the mail and send it here to the church, but you can also call the church office and learn about electronic giving, or you can download our app and you can give directly through our app as well. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and almighty and merciful God. You are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. On the evening before Jesus was betrayed, he gathered his disciples together for one final, yet very important meal. It was during this meal that Jesus would impart so many important truths and implore his disciples to stay connected to God because as God's love flowed through them, as God's presence walked alongside them and was in them and around them, as God's grace was unleashed in their lives, that is how they would survive the difficult times to come. At one moment in that meal, Jesus reached under a cloth and he brought out a piece of unleavened bread. He held it up and said a blessing for everyone who was present. Then he took the bread and he broke it in two. He gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, for this is my body, sacrificed on your behalf. When you gather together, do this for the remembrance of me. Later in that same meal, Jesus took a cup of wine. He stood up and said a prayer of thanks. And then he told his disciples, Take and drink from this cup, for this cup is the new covenant shed in my blood for you and for all people for the forgiveness of all sins. When you gather together, do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one spirit, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the table for all now is ready. Please be seated. For those of you who are at home, this is a moment when you can take that bread or those crackers, uh, the water or the juice that you've gathered, uh, and you can... If you're by yourself, take it uh, and eat them and drink them yourselves. If you're with someone else, you can turn to that person and offer to give them the bread or the crackers, the water or the juice, and simply say, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Come to the table, for all now is ready, and all are welcome. and left to die. die. Oh, Oh, raise your head for love is passing by. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. And live Now your burdens lifted and carried far away, and precious blood has washed away the stain. So sing to Jesus, sing to Jesus. 
Please stand wherever you are. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Uh, As you leave the sanctuary, please make sure you take any of your uh, cups and dispose of them in the garbage. Thank you once again for connecting with us throughout this week. You'll see devotions that will arrive on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. You can connect further with us here at Alpine through those devotionals. Uh, On Wednesday evening, 7 o'clock, we have our prayer meeting. We also have worship next Sunday, 8 o'clock for our traditional service. 10 o'clock is our live broadcast, our online service and contemporary service as well. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine down upon you. May the Lord grant you mercy and strength and guide you as you imitate God's radical form of generosity. Amen. Everybody has trials and temptations. Everybody knows heartbreak, isolation. But we can lay our burdens down. Lay our burdens down. What a friend we have in Jesus. 
East to west my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon. And forever and ever his heart is my home. Everybody has fears, everybody's got worries. Everybody knows sorrow, devastation. But we can lay our burdens down, lay our burdens down. What a friend we have in Jesus, east to west my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon, and forever and ever his heart is my home. No more betrayal, for he is faithful, he fills me up and my cup runneth over. No more betrayal, for he is faithful, how he has proven it over and over. No more betrayal, for he is faithful, he fills me up and my cup runneth over. No more betrayal, for he is faithful, how he has proven I see grace on every horizon, and forever and ever his heart is my home. What a friend we have in Jesus, east to west my sins are gone. I see grace on every horizon, and forever and ever his heart is my home forever and ever his heart is my home called by christ our mission is to share god's love thanks be to god have a great week everybody